why is this topic even something that should be interesting to builders or modelers, yeah. architects, or people that are going to build a good house? Yeah. I mean, because they're human for starters. So if you're a human, this should be interesting. <laughs> we, we all breathe um, and we breathe in an environment that we don't think about very much. Um, the buildings that we spend most of our time in are really boxes full of fluid. Mm -hmm. We don't really see that fluid, so we don't think of it that way. It's a gas instead of a liquid, but it's really like living in an aquarium. We, we, uh, we live in buildings that are increasingly made of manufactured products. Mm -hmm. We fill these buildings with things that are formulated in laboratories, plastic goods, mm -hmm. uh, especially. Fresh air is a big deal. How do we do it? And I'll just preface this by saying huge thanks to Zender, who is sponsoring uh, today's webinar. Uh, this is an amazing uh, company with some really top of the line equipment. I titled my video world's most efficient ERV that I made with Chris at my house when I was putting this Compo, Q, uh, Compo Air Q in my house. This really is one of the best, if not the best uh, ERV in terms of efficiency, uh, in terms of filtration, in terms of uh, being able to distribute to the whole house in the world. And yes, this is more expensive than some other fresh air options, uh, but we do want to spend a few minutes talking about all the options and we will spend a yeah. few minutes talking also about this option. Guys, let's start with you, Jake. Talk to me about your evolution of what you've done with fresh air strategies in your houses. So I think... Um... I, I was thinking about this question. I think it can directly correlate the idea of us trying to gain control over our envelope with us trying to gain control over the indoor air quality. And so somewhere around 2013, I started uh, trying to figure out why people were getting sued in the building industry. And I realized that it was water and I needed to have better control and better control layers uh, to manage things like air on the outside of my house. And I immediately found systems that led me to gaining control over the, the air and the environment, and then immediately started worrying about that. And so the first iteration with our firm, we actually introduced a point of use ERV in a renovation situation. So the bath fan style ERV into a closet a master closet that had a dog door that they kept the door closed uh, to the rest of the house all the time. And the client said, oh, we're having some moisture issues down here low. Uh, like we had a pair of shoes to kind of get almost like moldy because there were really, really high humidity levels in this little room. And I said, well, let's turn the air over in this room and, and filter what's coming in and see if we can steal enough humidity off of it as it comes through an ERV to eliminate the issues that you're having. And I mean, obviously couldn't possibly ask the clients to get rid of their dog and get rid of the dog door. So we have to solve for the, the, the conditions that were given. And that was the first time that we used an ERV. We used it as a sense to take care of humidity, take care of turnover of air, get, get rid of that stale air inside the house, just like Chris just said. And then we started applying that to bath fans. As soon as we saw that that was working, like Let's find a way to get rid of the air that we don't want in the house, get new air inside the house uh, and do it in a way that doesn't depressurize our envelope, which was a huge deal. And we probably spent five years just using point of view CRVs instead of bath fans. And we thought we were way ahead of the game. We thought that we were really knocking it out of the park. And while we were doing a better job with indoor air quality than some of our competitors, we weren't really there yet. Uh, after the bath fan era, let's call it the bath fan era, the, the point of use era, uh, we graduated to uh, whole house ERV um, and we used multiple different manufacturers. Uh, the things that we learned were nobody really has great filtration in that mid-level market. Like there's some equipment that's just fine and could be just fine for you, uh, but nobody has... Uh, really well thought out and really well engineered. I suspect that's because a bunch of those plug and play box ERVs are manufactured by one company that's stamping out those boxes for them. Uh, and then they're just branding it differently. And until recently, that's what we were on. And now we've started using the Zender equipment uh, and not to get too advertising, but they make a really good ERV that gives us a lot of options that we're including in the beginning of the design process. A lot of times with Steve, because we work with Steve a lot, 
Uh, he and I both like their equipment so that it's easy for us just to go, okay, well, this is what we're going to use. It took me a while to get there. And I think it takes a lot of builders a while to get there, which is the things that are really important to you or that should be important to your clients, but they don't know it yet. You don't give them options. Like for instance, uh, I don't give them an option for a crappy painter bid, a relatively okay painter bid and a good painter bid. I give them the option for a good paint job and that's it. And I don't say, well, you know, we could save 30% if we use this guy who works out of a pickup truck and is kind of crappy uh, and the house is not going to look very good, but you know, we can save 20 K on that or 10 K on that. I budget for the correct people in each category. Uh, and then if we need to have an overall budget discussion, we can have that, but I don't uh, budget for something that I think is a bad idea for the client or give them options on bad ideas. You know, there's a reason why we live inside a building is because we don't want to be outside and we want to be inside because we want control. And so we gain control, but with that control comes, you know, clean filtrated air. And I have a number of clients too, which stick out in my mind. Um, and they stick out because I've done a house for them, but they also have a primary residence that they live in part of the year. And both of them love to come to their mountain house because the, the wife has just come out and said, she goes, I feel better when I'm in this house. I sleep better. I dream when I'm here. None of that happens when I go back to my old crappy house down in, I won't say where, the mid-Atlantic. Um, but, uh, but no, I mean, clients, it's a noticeable difference. Dan Roy, who's probably one of my more famous clients, you've been to his house, Matt, and, and you've actually met him and talked to him. But That's, my, that's one of my first Zender uh, installs that I've ever seen, Steve. Yeah, and, and Dan Roy is the first one to come out and say, I hate walking out the door of my house because there's no environment that's better than the inside of my house. Mm. He feels the best when he's in there, the temperature is right, moisture control, all of that stuff. What you're trying to say, Steve, is that Instead of just dumping the air back from an ERV into, say, a hallway and then hoping that a HVAC return is going to circulate it, their system will actually uh, feed back to separate spaces so that, like, all three of my bedrooms can get air that's been filtered and tempered through the device. Yeah, that everybody in the house gets their fair share of air and the extraction is the same. You're not relying on one big return or something in in a hallway or main living room you're actually pulling it from the areas of odor control and moisture control bathrooms kitchen but this core that he's pulling out is where that heat and moisture exchange happen as those air streams go near each other but don't actually touch each other it's called a fixed plate heat exchanger there's different ways to do energy recovery and ventilation but this is the most common in residential settings especially in north america what you've got is a, is a bunch of fixed plates and they're stacked together. And these create, um, they're, they're formed in such a way as to create channels. And so every other channel, you'll have fresh air from, in, from outside coming one way and the stale air from inside going the other way. And so that's, you're, you're replicating that over hundreds or maybe thousands of channels within this, this uh, heat exchanger core. And so we pass the airstreams by each other. We don't mix them, but we pass them by each other. And through convection and through vapor uh, migration through that, through that membrane, we exchange heat and humidity. 